The endoderm is the tissue which will give rise to the epithelial lining of the respiratory and digestive tracts and associated organs, such as the lungs, liver and pancreas. The endoderm is shown here labelled with GFP. It comprises a tube that runs along much of the anterior posterior length of the midgestational mouse embryo. The detailed cell behaviours underlying the formation of the endoderm, which take place during gastrulation, are complex and not so well as understood, at least in the mouse. We've approached the problem of gut endoderm formation by investigating the behaviour and fate of a tissue called the visceral endoderm. And anyone familiar with the early mouse embryo might find this a rather surprising choice, as the prevailing view has been that the visceral endoderm that is present in the early mouse embryo is, was generally believed to be distinct from the definitive endoderm which arises from the epiblastic gastrulation. Essentially, the visceral endoderm was thought of as exclusively extraembryonic, thereby not contributing cellular descendants to the embryo itself. Prior to the initiation of gastrulation, the mouse embryo comprises a bilaminar cup-shaped structure consisting of visceral endoderm, shown here in blue, which encapsulates the extraembryonic ectoderm, shown here in green, proximally, and the pluripotent epiblast, distally, shown here in red. At gastrulation, cells that will form the mesoderm and definitive endoderm ingress through the primitive streak, a morphologically distinct structure which marks the posterior end of the embryo, shown here on the right. As cells ingress, they undergo an epithelial to mesenchymal transition. Mesoderm emerges as two bilateral wings of cells that spread anteriorly in the space between two epithelia, the visceral endoderm on the outer surface of the embryo and the inner epiblast. The cellular movements underlying the morphogenesis of the definitive endoderm are a little more obscure. We know that definitive endoderm cells emerge in the vicinity of the anterior primitive streak. From there, they intercalate onto the embryo's surface and insert into the pre-existing overlying visceral endoderm epithelium as they undergo a mesenchymal to epithelial transition. It was originally believed that as definitive endoderm cells emerged onto the embryo's surface at its distal tip, their expansion might displace the visceral endoderm proximally towards extraembryonic regions. From there, all visceral endoderm would be poised to form the yolk sac. However, there were at least two pieces of data that didn't quite fit with such a model in black and white, or in this case, in red and blue. Firstly, fate mapping experiments had identified some cells emerging in the endoderm at sites distant from their site of ingression of the primitive streak. Secondly, the careful analysis of tetraploid chimeras, the gold standard for proof of pluripotency, revealed that some tetraploid visceral endoderm cells were scattered in the region of the gut endoderm, as shown here anticipating that the developmental events would be rapid and highly dynamic we undertook a series of experiments centering around the use of live imaging to visualize live cell behaviors in situ in living mouse embryos we generated various reporter strains of mice where we labeled the visceral endoderm with different fluorescent proteins or alternatively we directed the expression of the cre recombinases specifically within the visceral endoderm for genetic fate mapping this is an example of one of the reporter strains we generated the left-hand image is a midline section of a transgenic embryo. You can clearly see the separation between visceral endoderm, which expresses GFP, and epiblast, which does not. On the right is a projection of the type of data shown on the left. Each frame of the movie is a single time point of a time lapse. As the movie plays, you can see that distally, visceral endoderm becomes dispersed. It starts off as homogeneously GFP positive, but over time, increasing numbers of GFP negative regions appear. These observations are summarized in this series of images which depict the expected versus the observed distribution of visceral endoderm. Our data suggested a dynamic sequence of events taking place during endoderm formation. This led us to propose that visceral endoderm is dispersed by the intercalation of definitive endoderm cells. In this way, visceral endoderm cells would become scattered and not displaced to extraembryonic regions you can get a better idea of the distribution of these two populations of cells in this view of a head full stage embryo. This image also reveals another unexpected observation that we made. This being that these dispersed visceral endoderm cells become organized around midline structures, including the primitive streak and node, something we don't currently understand. Imaging of visceral endoderm descendants after their dispersal, as shown in this time-lapse movie, reveals that they are highly dynamic as they extend and retract projections. 
they appear to avoid one another and are usually found as single cells. Moreover, they divide, as highlighted here in red, supporting the notion that these cells are maintained by the embryo as it grows and suggesting that they may be poised to contribute to the later fetus and adult.